<laughs> what do you think of that? Cool, huh? What happens when you put 160 of the country's top anglers on a section of the Mississippi River they've never been on before? First cast. That's a good one. Big, 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 big. Brian Schmidt is hoping to outfish FLW legend Andy Morgan in a river battle for the ages. Yes, sir. That's the kind of get you back in it. FLW starts now. You're looking at the good old Mississippi River here in La Crosse, Wisconsin. On the sixth stop for the 2017 FLW Tour, I'm Travis Moran alongside Vic Battalero. Uh, Vic, you have a lot of experience on this river uh, with your 12 years as a touring pro. Outstanding, I'll tell you that this is actually where I started my pro tournament career, was right here on this Mississippi River. And I had a great time, it's a great place to fish, it's a very large place to fish. These pros have a lot of water to deal with. From pool seven at the north to pool nine in the south, there's lots of river channel swings, islands, backwater sloughs. There's everything you can throw at a bass fisherman, all contained in one river system. And one river rat that really stands out is Andy Morgan, one of my favorite pros on the tour. And he's really showing us how to get it done on this Mississippi River. This is a shallow water fisherman's dream. I mean, anywhere you go, you've got colored water, you've got plenty of shallow cover, you've got grass, you've got wood, you've got rock, you've got boat docks, just kind of anything you want, and these fish live shallow. I mean, this is this is a perfect storm for me. It's right up my alley. And another person that has uh, plenty of experience with moving water is Brian Smith, who has really uh, sharpened his teeth on the Potomac River over the years. Very comfortable with that fluctuating water. Another guy that's that's really got the uh, resume to go head to head with Andy Morgan. You know, I'm familiar with uh, shallow rivers. You know, I'm a Potomac guy, so it's a little bit easier for me. What I look for is I'm looking for grass. I'm looking for protected areas where a lot of fish could spawn. Uh, when you find that, now you want to look for where they're going to go once they're done spawning. And that's what I keyed in on. I had marked seven or eight three plus pound fish that I'd seen. I went back and I was able to catch uh, four of those. And then I was able to catch two more just fishing new water later in the day. And uh, that, unfortunately, that left me with not too many fish left. So yesterday I went out and caught a bunch of two and a halfs. This is a northern fishery. You don't have that much difference in size of fish up here. Once they hit the three pound mark, it's hard for them to grow beyond, much beyond three pounds. And now let's take a look at our full leaderboard of our 20 anglers. It's day three. Only 10 of these anglers are gonna be moving on to the fourth and final day. And there are some top-notch pros in that top 20. You got David Dudley, Larry Nixon, Jimmy Houston, Scott Martin, the superstars of the sports that wanna move up and make that top 10. And who's gonna be moving on? We're gonna find out because the action starts now. There's a flood watching effect on the river. Now that's a concern. We get these immense thunderstorms, hail, wind, rain, lots of rain. This area of the country, if you understand the fish movements a little bit, you can kind of follow them along. Day three, Mississippi River, let's go. We're in the, the bottom of a uh, pool eight here, and it's just a I think it's just a sandbar that was made by the current here. I, I don't know, I'm not from here, but I think from the years of the current, you know, we're off the main channel. We're in the middle of the river. The unique thing about this spot, it has a deep hole in it. You know, we're a long ways from deep water and there's a deep hole in here and there's a little bit of a current entrance. So you got protective water and a little bit of current. You got grass and you got rock, you got everything they need, and you got deep water for when they want to, you know, back off. So, keep it number one. Got to get bigger. It's a good sign they haven't gone anywhere. Decent little chunk. Our day three leader going into this morning, Andy Morgan. This has been something he's been doing pretty consistent the first two days at least is uh, flipping. If you're fishing against Andy Morgan and he's flipping stuff like this, you might be in trouble. You know, he's in the backwater. He ran a long way. He ran down into lock nine, then ran all the way up into a slough. 
fishing skinny water. You know, he's a river fisherman. He's fishing exactly what he wants to fish. The majority of my fish came from right out here in this open water, you know, back out toward the main lake more, which is now pretty dirty. The mighty muddy got mightier and muddier, so pushing mud back in a lot of these areas. It was one of these deals for me. It was a lot of time on the trolling motor. I went in, you kind of figure your way in. I didn't know anything about it now. I had to idle in, idle out, figure a trail in and out of these backwaters and just put the trolling motor down and fish and cover water. The northern strain, they bite pretty good. So if you get around them any at the right time of day, you're gonna get a bite and they'll let you know if they're there. You just gotta cover a lot of ground, make a lot of casts and the pattern will develop. Numero uno. <laughs> there may be some left up through here. Not as big as we need, but all right. Well, Andy Morgan really going to work early this morning uh, and catching smallmouth in what would seemingly be a largemouth territory. I agree. I mean, that's something. That's something different than you'd ever really see. Absolutely. And that brings us to the General Tire Roadmap to Victory. And you know, I think that roadmap starts with these guys are keying on these smallmouth. It seems like the smallmouth seem to be a little bit better. They're weighing in a little bit more. So those three pounders are a little bit more common. Andy Morgan happens to be fishing in a place that has both. So he doesn't know one flip might be a smallmouth, one might be a largemouth, but he's working really hard to put them in the boat so his average will get up near that 15 pounds. The next thing that's gonna be a key is gonna be the spawning fish. These guys have went out, these pros have marked the areas. They're using different techniques like pop bars and uh, swim baits to get these fish to show themselves. They'll swim back down and uh, they'll know where that bed is. They'll mark it and then come back and fish it. And the third thing that I think is a key to winning this tournament is a big bite bait. These guys have went out, fish day after day. They know what bait is gonna catch a bigger fish. So these guys are going to concentrate. They're going to work a little bit harder with these baits that they know might produce a three or four pounder. That'll be the key to winning this tournament. Oh, there's number one. Large mouth. We got to keep her early this morning. They better watch out. Kind of a slow morning so far. I started in an area where I didn't uh, have many bites, actually I didn't fish it, but it was an area that led up to where I had a fish that was probably about three pounds on a bed. So I figured I'd fish into it. We ended up catching a couple. We got a, I don't know, a two pound largemouth and a probably a pound and a half smallmouth. Uh, we just made a move to an area that I've kind of been saving. I caught two, three pounders out of it the first day. And I had a lot, lot of fish in practice, so I'm I'm hoping uh, it starts getting pretty good here. My note says two pounder on left side of rock in front of laydown. So if that fish is still there and if you know nobody caught it, we should have a two pounder roughly on the left side of that rock. It's really you know the time of year that these guys can do stuff like this. You know when they're spawning, you know those fish are there. They're going to be there. Um, hopefully they stay there for a week. You know between practice and tournament. So notes are key, you know, and it's, it's really when you can dial things in. That's why you really, when you're, when you're tournament fishing this time of year, this is when you want to have a good practice because you want to locate those fish. That was amazing. That was, that was a fish from days and days ago that, uh, that obviously flashed on a, on a topwater. He GPSed it. Not, not quite a two pounder, but a keeper. Took his little notes, the, the, rock, the rock in front of the lay down, and he's made, I don't know, 10, 15 casts at, at that same little spot? Absolutely, that was perfect. Vic, things are really heating up here. You know, this Mississippi River is red hot this morning. Don't go anywhere. We have more action from the Mississippi River here in La Crosse, Wisconsin. The FLW Tour is brought to you by General Tire. Anywhere is possible. BRP Evinrude. Learn more at evinrude.com. You can get more from your oil with Quaker State. Costa Del Mar. 
See what's out there. Ranger Boats, still building legends, one at a time. And by PowerPole, swift, silent, secure. A little better, good number five. Mark now, three pounder. That's a good one. There's a few left here. Not near as big as they were, but they're all right. Going back green today. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone, to our continued coverage here on this sixth stop of the 2017 FLW Tour here in La Crosse, Wisconsin. I'm Travis Moran alongside Vic Vadalero. There's only four pounds that separated uh, first and 20th place going into today. Basically, it's anyone's game to make that top spot, but all these anglers want to make sure that they survive to fish on day four as well. Absolutely, and if you look at the weights throughout this tournament, you know, that 10 to 12 pound range was average. Those guys that caught a three and four pounder, they're the guys in the top 20. That's the key to the success to making that top 10 and, and hopefully winning this tournament. And how about Joshua Weaver? Connecting with a quality fish early on in the day, this could be a huge game changer. That's a game changer right there. I mean, a four pounder and early in the morning. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> You're an on live That's and I'm a good one right there, baby. That's the way to start the morning. He knows, so he knows some good things are happening for him. Absolutely, and it basically tells him he will be fishing in the top 10 day, you know? So that four pounder is game changer right yes. there. And now we move over to one of our other anglers who's also having a great season this year and fishing a very similar pattern to Andy Morgan is Jeff Sprague. He's also fishing all the way down in the uh, pool nine. And you know, it makes sense. He's a uh, guide down at Lake Fork. Those guys love to fish wood. Love to have their flipping stick in their hand. It probably makes sense that he's doing the same thing as Andy Morgan, pitching, flipping to a lot of different targets way back in that timber. Oh, God bless America, man. I was flipping flat out tungsten sinkers, and this is a key deal for me. I only had just a few half ounces. So on day three, I go to the tackle store. I'm gonna go up and buy me some extra half ounce sinkers because I was out of my flat outs. And this is no lie, the first two fish uh, that I flip into, I bust them off. The, there's, there's just no inserts in those, and that's why I'm a firm believer in like, I'm a, my flat out tungsten is a huge deal. Uh, they don't break your line when you're flipping on fluorocarbon, they don't cut your line, so that was, you know, cost me dearly. I, I learned an extremely valuable lesson today. I'd like to say, you know, that it was a grinnel or a pike or what, uh, you know, whatever, but I mean, I gotta look at that fish. I mean, he shook the bush when I flipped in there. Little guy. Number one. He's a baby, but be all right. To get up here, to come to a place I've never been before, like the Mississippi, and, and it actually fall right into the way I like to fish. And to be doing well and to actually win this event, oh my gosh, it would feel so good. I've only had one win on the FLW Tour. Now, I've had a bunch of seconds, but only one win. So I'm kind of thirsty to win another event. And uh, that would be, it'd be great. It'd be a feather in my hat and some money in my pocket, and I'd be glad to get both. These fish have just pulled up spawning on this stuff. And I really caught them in here good when it was warmer. Look at that, man. That's, that's obviously a nice one. Oh. <laughs> good chunk. Large mouth. That's good. That's a good sign. Let them suckers bite. Andy caught him a green one. Now he takes a deep breath and puts his head down. Right. Give me a little bit of leniency to run around, maybe run into a better area. I don't think I can survive in here another day. And now we're back over to Brian Schmidt. Now, even though both these anglers have very little experience on the Mississippi River, both uh, really have a lot of experience river fishing. Uh, Andy Morgan grew up fishing the Tennessee River. Schmidt really talking about how this 
uh, a tournament is really lining up just like how he fishes on the Potomac. I just kind of clicked with, you know, this style of fishing. It's kind of pretty much what I do up home, all, you know, all my life fishing shallow, a lot of grass and uh, I clicked with this place pretty quick. It was more learning how to navigate, finding the areas, you know, I felt like I could catch them if I just got around them. Fishing's all about momentum, and right now we're going into the, the final event after this, is, which is on the Potomac, which is my home water, which I can't wait to get to. And this is kind of like a practice, not really practice, we gotta finish this, but this has the momentum going for the next event, and momentum's big in fishing. There we go. There we go. Good one. <laughs> that's what I've been catching. See that? That I don't know if that's a pre-spawn. Giggling right now. He's giggling because he knows it's not just because he got that fish. He knows that he made the right choice. He might be that one step closer now, filling out the limit with some fish like that. Key fish. You know that three pounder. Again, we talked about it earlier. Those three, four pound class fish. Key fish to uh, making it to the top ten and making it to to holding up that big check at the end of the tournament. And now moving over to Austin Felix. Our angler started the morning in fifth place. You know, he's our 2014 FLW College Fishing National Champion from the University of Minnesota. Representing the Golden Gophers. Uh, he uh, has experience on the Mississippi River, and so uh, he's been really targeting those smallies, which we talked about as a key to this event. But uh, not only that, because of his experience, because he's been on this water before, he's able to uh, go back on memory, past history, and not run out of water. Those smallmouth like to spawn in the same spot. It's a quick little bank. The current swings around out there at the end of the point, so you got about two, 300 yards of slack water, and smallmouth like to spawn as close to the current as they can get, but still get out of it. And there's a little bit of a back current occasionally, but it's not too bad. Uh, there's just a pile of them in here. Water's too dirty to actually see them, so I think a lot of people miss them. You really gotta pick it apart, because you gotta drag it right over their bed, and then you'll catch a few. Every single fish I'm catching here is most likely on a bed. Oh God, I did not get a good hook into him. I'm lucky enough to live only a few hours from here, so I have spent some time here before. It's very tricky, very complicated fishery. It's continuously changing between water level, current level, weather, wind. The only thing it doesn't have is a tide. Better one. Definitely a call. Still plenty of fishing left here for these anglers. Lots of decisions to be made. We'll be right back. Do not go away. Large man. The chunk. That's a good one. I got one more 112 in there. If I could replace it with another two and a half, I might get to go fishing them out. Oh, I don't. Do I gotta go to braid? I, I mean, I guess I gotta go braid. Welcome back, everyone, for our sixth stop on the 2017 FLW Tour out of La Crosse, Wisconsin. I think a lot of these anglers that are near those top spots are pretty safe right now. I think we'll be seeing them fishing tomorrow. You know, you never know what tomorrow brings. The water's coming up, the, the weather's gonna change. It's definitely getting colder, so uh, these guys got a lot to think about, but they're doing a great job doing it. And one of the guys that started the day in fifth place is Austin Felix. He's moved up. He won the 2014 College Fishing Championship for Minnesota, the Golden Gophers. Definitely a guy that has had success at, at, the, at the college level and is now uh, testing that here at, uh, at the highest level there is on the FLW Tour. Solid half pound call. All the fish are current oriented. Uh, this time of year, most of them are trying to get out of the current. I expected them to be further along than they were. I expected a lot of fish to be post-spawn and pulling out, but I fished a lot of current breaks, a lot of stuff that you catch them in, in the summer, that stuff that they first hit on their way out of the spawning areas, and I just wasn't getting bit. So I've spent almost all my time completely out of the current. Oh, there's some big Oh. Come here. Come here. Yes! Woo! 
I think that one's gonna get me to Sunday, boys. <laughs> what was that for a call, huh? Adjustments have really been the key to Brian Schmidt's day. And right now he's making a move. And I think it's the right move. Brian's been fishing an area all morning and catching a lot of fish. He's fishing something comfortable, similar to the Potomac River that he fishes all the time. Lots of weeds, trenches, corners. So he's gonna make a small move and see if he can duplicate that type of cover to catch more fish. I'm hoping we get a couple nice fish over here. I haven't hit it six days ago I hit it and they had, had a couple decent little fish. This was all a mat, a mat of grass. That's how much the water's come up. Like this whole bay here, it was thick matted up stuff here. Now it's not. <laughs> Heck yeah. That's what I needed, dude. Three pound, three and a half pounder. That was a big move right there. He's really got momentum going. He, uh, he's consistently, it's not, it's, not, it's not happening a lot, but he's consistently doing this throughout the day. He's making adjustment, making adjustment, connecting with a big one. Making a bunch more adjustments, connecting with a big one. Now, Andy Morgan, uh, a couple days ago, he was fishing that lowering water. Those fish had moved out to the edges. They were very predictable. But today, he's got that rising water. He's making some adjustments. Yeah, I'll tell you what, rising water, it's, it's a little scary because now the fish, instead of being on that outside edge, they're working their way back in the cover. So he's having to make longer pitches, make better cast, and basically fish more water. The key thing, it's hard to predict where your bite's going to come from. Basically, all I'm doing is hunting spawners. It's not your typical sight fishing deal when you're hunting spawners. It's I can't see these fish. I'm, I'm moving around a lot, and they're super shallow. I mean, they're even smallmouth. They're in 18 inches of water. You'll catch a smallmouth, two largemouth, three smallmouth, two largemouth. I mean, it's such a mixed bag, and they're all super shallow. They're on cover in a little bit, not dirty water, but a little tinged up water. And then, of course, they're on beds, and you can move around and, you know, flip trees, uh, throw a spinnerbait in grass, a chatterbait. They bite. Typical Andy Morgan right here at his best. Flipping that heavy cover. You know, Andy's got to be feeling pretty good. He's uh, doing what he likes to do. He's picking away. He's working hard to get that three-pounder, get a three-pound average. Large man. He may outweigh a small man, maybe. So it's a... Uh, 145 and there's myself and several other guys waiting for that barge to come through 315 check-in but we got about a 15 minute idle to get to the check-in dock so we got to be back to that idle by about three o'clock we got about a 20 minute run up let me catch this fish it really really becomes a, a strategy play when you've got barges that are both going northbound and southbound. Uh, it's, it's important to know exactly how long it takes for those barges to get from one lock to another. So for the anglers that want to go to pool seven or pool nine, they're going to maybe have to cut their day short by several hours if they want to make it back in time for weigh-in. So we wait at the lock and catch our bass while the barge is coming through. <laughs> across Wisconsin, cut day, day three. David Dudley, 12 pounds and seven ounces, a limit of bass for Wesley Strider. 13 pounds and eight ounces, 14 pounds even today for Larry Nixon. It took me a while to figure them out and find them and I've got a little sweet area that uh, I milked pretty hard today because I knew I had to to make the cut. Joshua Weaver getting it done. 14 pounds and three ounces. I wasn't on anything during practice and pulled up to a spot first day of the tournament. That's where I've caught every fish I've weighed in this week. So it's just a, one of those deals that it's, when it's meant to be, it's meant to be. The guy can catch them. Five today for Andy Morgan Worth. 14 pounds, 12 ounces. This place is full of bass, it's full of shallow cover, and it's, it's a good time if you're a shallow fisherman. 15 pounds and 12 ounces. You got the lead, Brian Schmidt. My area's changing, and I got to change with it. Every day I've kind of evolved where I'm at, and if we could do it one more day, we'll see, but uh, there's a lot of good fishermen behind me. Wow! We've got a fantastic top 10. Tomorrow will be epic. The weights are close. 12 ounces out of the gate tomorrow. 
separates first from second. On a day when everyone was looking to make the move into Sunday's cut, rookie pro Justin Atkins made the biggest. Climbing into the top 10 after starting the day in 17th place, Atkins is our Evan Rude big mover. It's a little cliche, but we're just going to swing for it and do something a little risky when you're actually in position to have the possibility to win. You might as well try to win, so that's what we're going to do. I'm going to probably fish largemouth all day. Anybody in this top 10 has got a shot to win. This is going to be pretty much a one-day shootout, so fingers are crossed. Ounces is going to decide who wins this. It's not done by any means. Somebody in 10th place could win this event. Uh, so tight, it won't be done till the last cast. Welcome everyone to Payday here in La Crosse, Wisconsin on the Mississippi River for our fourth and final day on the sixth stop of the 2017 FLW Tour. Once again, I'm Travis Moran, alongside our guest in the studio, Vic Vadalero. You guys, we're having an amazing time and it really is turning out to be that that tale of the two river wizards. You know, these two guys, Andy Morgan and Brian Schmidt, they are duking it out on this Mississippi River system, doing the best they can do to figure out these river bass. And I mean, they are catching them. So we've got an exciting tournament ahead of us. And while we have these two anglers that are really uh, kind of stealing the show, you cannot count out the bottom eight. Uh, stacked with talent there. We've got names like David Dudley, Larry Nixon, Todd Otten, all are going to be swinging for the fences and trying to get a, a, a shot at that big check at the end of the day. Who's going to win this thing? You're about to find out because day four starts now. It's definitely fishable. The water's come up, I'd say another foot. But, the, you know, it's a little breezy in here, but it's fishable. We're going to hopefully be able to do what we need to do in here. And Brian Schmidt going straight to his best water. It's gotten him this far, but I know he's expressed some concerns. Vic, what is, uh, what's going through his mind right now? You know, he's excited and nervous at the same time. Will this place still produce four days in a row? That's the big question. It's muddy, windy, cold. We will see. Got to get a bite, you know. That's when you know. I think this area that he's fishing, you know, with this current the way it is, I think he's got fish moving in, feeding. It's more of a feeding location. He's catching pre-spawn fish, he's catching post-spawn fish, and he's catching bedding fish. So that's kind of the magic to this area, I think. Number one, didn't take long. We're gonna be all right. When we got to the ramp this morning, I saw that the water was up. I got down into pool nine this morning and, you know, it was up. Looked like it might have been up a half a foot, but when you put a half a foot in a place like Pool 9, it's flat. There's a lot of islands and stuff where I went willow, you know, willow flats, bushes, grass. When you put another half foot of water, it just scatters everything out because it's it literally hundreds, if not thousands of yards more water. And those fish are living in a foot and a half of water anyway, so everything that was 10 inches to a foot deep, now is a foot and a half deep. So it just scatters them out, makes them a little tougher to catch because you're fishing for less fish on the edge. I don't even know what I got. Golly, boom. It's a big one. That's a heartbreaker. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. But also a, uh, you know, a good sign uh, as well. Got getting hung right there, put me behind, got me in a bad position, ran around that tree. It was four pounder there for sure. He had some concerns that there wasn't as many fish, but then he loses a big one. So to see some bigger fish mm. could really show some potential that uh, that might be that that winning bag might be there for him today. I was due. I ain't lost one in three days. Wow! 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 wow. And now we move over to Josh Weaver, having an excellent tournament for only his second year as a touring pro, guaranteed a top ten finish today, no matter where he ends up. He's been fishing the same spot all four days now, and the first three days, it's produced a quality fish each and every day. Basically all it is is an underwater wing dam that was out of the water, start of the tournament. 
it seems to have like two or three feed times throughout the day and you'll catch like one or two maybe in between if, but most of the time it's just totally dead if the feed times aren't going on and it seems every morning there's been a decent feed time so i'm just trying to take advantage of the morning feed time Ah, yes, sir. That's a good way to start the morning right there. Not quite a four pounder. He's a solid keeper. Number one, we're going to catch him again. He's working that wacky rig Senko methodically behind that wing dam. And each day it's producing him a very good fish and a great bag yes, to go along with it. And we've got plenty more time for these anglers to catch a lot more bass. More to come from the FLW tour in La Crosse, Wisconsin. That's the way we start the morning. Big, big, big. We got something now, Bubba. Got you, sucker. Smallest one I put in a live wheel all week. E14, like a bonus. Hey! There you go, smallest. Mixing it up again today. Welcome back, everyone, on the Mississippi here, La Crosse, Wisconsin, 2017 FLW Tour. This is our final day. And it is exciting, to say the least. Here we are, top 10 guys. These guys are out there, and Brian Schmidt is putting it on. Andy Morgan right behind him. Austin Felix does have time on this body of water. He could be making a total adjustment, going from predominantly smallmouth uh, fishing, now over that largemouth pattern, uh, and we could see the right adjustment at the right time. I mean, I think he's fishing a, a strong game, has a nice game plan there. It's just typical backwater. There's a little current in here right now, but they spawn up against this rock bank. There's railroad tracks, just like the stuff I was fishing yesterday, except this is more largemouth. The area, it's just a backwater lake that's usually cut off by land and trees, but there's a lot more water in there than I thought there'd be. It's maybe a 100 acre lake. It's pretty small. And you ba I basically went around the bottom half of it. Whenever you can get to a hard bank like that, it's always a good pattern. Dang it. That one will help. Picked up that Kai Tech and was just covering water real fast. Choked it. Here we're getting our first look at a split screen. Brian Schmidt on the left. You know, Brian, he's staying in one spot and he's being very quiet. And believe me, that's a Potomac trick, not to make noise. Be as quiet as you can. Don't touch the power poles. Don't leave the fish finders on. And he's just dragging different baits through the same area. And I could get a bite on a vibrating jig, which me makes sense in here. So some mistakes guys can make coming to a massive fishery like this is trying to learn everything. You know, it's so big that you almost need to pick one pool and learn it. You can't even see all the one pool in, in a week. So these fish eat, you know, you just gotta pick a pool and stick with it. They're sitting where they're supposed to sit. Gotta get them while we can get them. Three pounder. Matthew Steffen, he's trying some new stuff. Called a little bit of an audible and we ran down on the south end of Pool 9. There's a, a couple of dike walls that we're fishing. I fished it in practice, caught a three and a two, and uh, just figured I'd see what it's like with a little bit more water on it. I thought maybe it would be, uh, you, you might get more fish that actually would congregate to it. Catch this fish. Plan might be to stay here a little longer. Not a giant, but a you know two pounder, two and a quarter. Today, I think it's kind of a little pre-spawn deal. I think there's some moving in here to spawn. I think some's already spawned and left, and you got another little batch moving in. And there may be a couple of spawners left in here. You never really know. I'd say it's a pretty decent mixture of spawners and just pre-spawners. Hey, Andy Morgan fishing that shallow water, and you know his mind's turning right now. What what he needs to do to get some chunky bites. 
I think he moved further up in that slough. I believe he said it was too shallow for him to even fish before, so all fresh water, you never know what's gonna happen here. And when you're flipping, it's nice to go to some fresh water where, that, that hasn't seen your bait, you know, for four days. Mm -hmm. And uh, Not very big. Sometimes that'll make something happen, you know. Mm, the 15 inch. Maybe the new water's gonna be the gig. The river's rocking today. These guys can catch fish any way they want to today. And the entire field, though, still chasing that leader, Brian Schmidt. Stay tuned as the final day coverage continues after these messages. The FLW Tour is brought to you by Celebrating 60 years of fish finding excellence, Lowrance. GoPro, this is your life. Be a hero. The world leader in off-road innovation, Polaris Off-Road Vehicles. Yeti, built for the wild. And by TH Marine, from transom to trolling motor. What do you think of that cool, huh? huh? Be a bass, please. I got around 11 and 3 quarters. I want to stay here all day until I got enough weight to win the tournament. We go and climb up the leaderboard today. We better be catching them today. Welcome back to our final day coverage here on the Mississippi River. I'm Travis Moran alongside Vic Vadalero. What a great day on the water for these guys. Absolutely, Vic. Brian Schmidt led the tournament going into the final day today and just jumped out on these fish immediately and has, and has really led the day wire to wire but Andy Morgan, he's not gonna go down without a fight. And then we've got a whole slew of other anglers that are very thirsty. They're all out after him. And you see some big fish out there, so that's the danger to these leaders, that uh, these guys catch a couple more big fish down the pack, they can move right into the first place position. So in no way is Brian safe at first place right up there right now. Everybody wants to win. I've had success at the Costa level, and a tour win, I think, would it would be pretty special. To, to add that to what I've done. And um, I think the opportunities to, to win a tour event don't come along too often. All these guys are really, really, really good. I feel this is definitely my best shot at one. I want it. <laughs> I want it back. I hope they keep biting. That'll help. I think that'll help. Brian Schmidt, he's playing the game of numbers, you know, numbers and numbers of fish, calling up with ounces. You know, I think it's key. That's the difference. You know, you haven't seen Andy catching lots and lots of fish today. So Brian's doing what he needs to do. We talked about how significant it would be for Schmidt to actually get his first win, but uh, Morgan hasn't had a tour win. He's only had one tour win. And that was all the way back to 2007. I know there's a lot of anglers that would uh, really enjoy seeing him get uh, get the win on this one as well. The area that I was in, it was down on Pool 9. I mean, it's no big secret. Uh, just a big backwater area. And it's just it's just a big flat. If you're a shallow fisherman, anywhere on this river, you've got that available cover. I mean, it's a bass mecca. If you like to fish shallow, I mean, this Mississippi River, this upper Mississippi is good. Real good. Maybe on a little something that we can spend some time in. There's not that much of it, so we're going to catch them in to catch them here pretty quick. Meet my ass. Definitely more productive than what we started on. That's a little better quality right there. That's an old chunk. And how about Joshua Weaver? He's the guy that's able to catch that big fish. He's got the biggest fish so far in the tournament. He's caught in a four plus every single day. If there's one guy that, that could do it, it's definitely him in the spot he's been fishing. He's sitting in the right spot right now. If I can get 16 or 17 pounds today, I feel like I have a chance. The winning fish are here. That's a big one. Oh my gosh. Could get interesting today. Giant. Woo! 
Yeah, baby. That's the cow we need right there. You know, I'm one or two bites away from possibly having a chance to win this thing. Yes, sir. That's the kind of get you back in it. That's a big one. That's a good one. We're going a lot there. It's not over yet. Fat lady hadn't sung yet. Now she's warming up, but she ain't sung. You got one. There ain't much of one, but I got one. A lot of these guys caught them out of that muddier water. I caught them out of the kind of the mix where it wasn't super muddy and it wasn't super clear. That was my best area. If I got where it was too clear, I couldn't catch them. If I got where it was too muddy, I couldn't catch much. So I kind of look for the mixture here. Well, we got us another one. I'm sure I'll end up middle of the pack, might drop a few places, but the top 10's a top 10. It's a ton of points. It's got me back up there and the hunt for the Forest Wood Cup, which is the ultimate goal. You know, I'm sure the guys called them. It's going to be close, but uh, I couldn't ask for a better day. I did lose one big one. Uh, first fish I've lost really all week that I knew was big, and, you know, everybody has that story, but we will see here very shortly. Time is up for our anglers out in the water, and Vic, there was no shortage of action today. None whatsoever. These guys were on fire. It's all over now. They've worked hard. They've done their job. Now it's time to get to the weigh-in. Absolutely. As our fishermen head over to the scales, we're going to find out how this thing shakes out. We're going to throw it over right now to world-famous weighmaster Chris Jones. Day four, Championship Sunday, Lacrosse, Wisconsin. A five-bass limit for Justin Atkins on day four. 12 pounds, 14 ounces, your new leader. You guys got a tremendous fishery, lots of fish. You know, this is a great place to take kids fishing. Woo! Check that out. A five-bass limit for Larry Nixon. 14 pounds, 13 ounces. You got the lead. 13 pounds, 11 ounces, moves you up to second place. Well, this is probably one of my favorite places to come to. It's just, you know, like yesterday I said, that you know, there's it's just full of fish and you get to do, you know, it's the way I like to fish. 14 pounds and two ounces. You got him by less than half a pound. Your new leader's Todd Alton. <laughs> yeah, baby. Another solid kicker for Joshua Weaver. 14 pounds, eight ounces. Wow, getting it done on Championship Sunday. Limit of bass, worth 11 pounds, seven ounces. You fall one place to fifth, worth 11 pounds, 14 ounces. A great tournament for Austin Felix. That's an old chunk. Wow. Oh, yeah. I'm just looking at Joshua. He's going, oh, no, he done lied to me. <laughs> Game time. He looks ready. <laughs> that ought to make your rest easier. <laughs> Looking for 12-11. Watch it with me. Here we go. Five today for Andy Morgan. Worth 12 pounds, 10 ounces. You survived the go, Andy Morgan, by one ounce. Whoo, baby, baby, baby. A five-fast limit for Brian Schmidt. Looking for his first tour win. You need 11 pounds and 15 ounces. Five today, worth 14 pounds, 10 ounces. Your champion is Brian Schmidt of Dill, Maryland. $125,000 payday for the Maryland Pro. I'm, I'm feeling really good. I'm speechless right now. I don't want to sound like everybody's saying the same thing, but this is unbelievable. I've wanted it for a long time. My wife, I know you're watching. This means a lot, babe. Thank you for letting me do, come out here and do this. 
the first morning I was here, I just clicked with it and we ran with it. It was just one of those weeks that everything came together. Brian Schmidt, he walks away, Mississippi River champion.